Hi, I'm Beth from Sew Country, and today's tutorial is for the third sewing marathon for 2024. Today I'll be sewing up the Fundamental Tote. This is from Jolie Lee Creations, our very own Leslie, who participates in the marathons with us. This will be my third fundamental toe, and I'm so excited to sew this one. I picked out amazing materials. I'm using vinyl from the Emporium. That is from Brittany Nicole. She also sews up tutorials with us in these marathons. I will also be using Brittany's webbing in this video. I will have the link in my description for both Leslie's pattern and Brittany's website. For my cotton fabric, the lining, I'm going to be using this amazing print from JNR Edwards. I will have their link available in my description as well. I have made two other versions of this pattern, so this will be my third. It is a wonderfully well-written pattern. It is perfect if you're wanting to increase your sewing knowledge in a very relaxed way. You will be able to have every step given to you, pictures throughout, tutorials and videos. It just walks you through everything. And so for my tutorial today, I'm going to do a few things different because I cannot match the amazingness that is that pattern. It's already written perfectly. So I'm just going to play around a little bit with a few things on it. The exterior will be vinyl. I do have it interfaced with a Royal Pixie Heavy. That is the equivalent of a Decaville Light. I did choose to keep it out of my seam allowances. For my lining, I'm using this cotton woven. Only thing I added to the lining was I added a layer of Royal Pixie Light, which is the equivalent of an SF-101. I am a huge supporter of pattern writers. What I like to show on my channel is not only the ways to sew up the pattern so you're motivated to use the patterns you buy, but also different ways that you can make the pattern work for you. I love to support pattern designers by buying the patterns, but also by showing there's so many ways you can use a pattern. So get your money's worth by the patterns by really learning how to sew the pattern properly and all kinds of different techniques for hacking and creating new versions of the pattern. For my version today, I'll be doing my handles differently than what's in the pattern. I will be using Brittany's webbing to make a rolled handle and to show a different way to attach it. I'm also going to take Leslie's pattern and I'm just going to print it at a reduced rate so that we can also make a matching pouch for this tote. So this will be my little baby fundamental pouch. It is taking that same pattern, reducing it down in size. You can see it's the exact same way. I will add a zipper lining and then we have a pouch that will match and fit inside our tote for better organization. These are two ways that you can take a pattern and just use it for different things so that you can get the most money out of a pattern you buy while still supporting our pattern designers. I'm going to show you the things I need also. So for this little pouch, I'll need the same things, the vinyl from Brittany, the cotton woven from JNR Edwards. But for the pouch, I'm also going to throw in a zipper, a zipper tab, and a zipper pull. For my tote version, I will not need any of that. I will just use my webbing and I'm going to add in some tags from Heartwood and Hyde. Let's go ahead and look at some of the pieces. The main things we're going to be focusing on is not this tote pattern. We're going to leave the pieces the same. We're not touching the pieces. We're just changing up the webbing. This is going to be what covers it, those raw ends of the webbing. It's going to go directly across the top exterior part of this bag. I'm going to have my webbing handles, the raw ends, in here so that I can have the rolled handle. Whenever I'm rolling a handle with this, I'm using the one and a half inch webbing and I'm simply going to fold it in half and clip all along and then sew it down. I'm not going to add anything inside. Brittany's webbing is very sturdy. I don't need to add anything else. It has enough structure on its own. If you are making a rolled handle out of a cotton woven, out of a thin vinyl, yeah, you would want to do something for that structure. I won't have any problems with this collapsing or not having the support it needs. I already have my rolled handles clipped together just to save you the time of having to watch me clip. So you can see I left a small amount unclipped. 
I left about three inches. This will be what I use to attach it to the bag. The rolled handle would hang out the top. I wouldn't want to have it rolled all the way down because then it would not lay right when I'm attaching to the bag and it would be very bulky and hard to sew. It would not have the strength it needs to have. So we will leave it like this and the first thing I'll do is I'm just going to sew from one end where it's clipped all the way around to the other. I will not sew the unclipped portions. So I will have two of these. I'm going to sew these on camera and then I'm also going to show how we're going to attach it on camera. My tags, I will be doing those off camera. I think everybody gets kind of tired of me adding 500 tags to each bag so I won't waste your time with those steps. The pouch I will sew on camera as well. Even though these are simple things, we're going to focus on really enjoying the sew and learning proper sewing techniques. So the first thing we're going to do is work on the handles. And then also what I did was I made the marks for where I'm placing my straps using Leslie's pattern. So I'm just taking where she says to place the straps and I'm just going to use those same markings to add mine. The only thing differently is I did make sure that I'm going to cover up those raw edges with the webbing. So let's go ahead and get started with having fun with this pattern, learn new ways to bring new life to a pattern without spending extra, extra money after we've bought one pattern. We are going to start first by working on the rolled handles. I cut the webbing to the length that Leslie suggests in the pattern and then I just clipped about three inches away from that raw bottom edge. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sew an eighth of an inch away from that folded edge there at the bottom, the raw edges, back stitching and then slowly going down the long sides. I'm going to make sure that the edges are matching up so I will go slow on this part just to make for sure I don't mess everything up. make for sure that I actually got these pretty close in size and I did so they look great. So I'm going to trim up the threads and then we're going to go ahead and add these to that front main panel. So now I have this front main panel out and I already have the marks drawn. Like I said, I am using Leslie's measurements for where to place this. I will place one of these straps on the marks given the pattern. Now, a couple ways to do this. I want to make sure this is stabilized really well when I take it over the machine so it's not shifting. If you're someone who likes to use double-sided tape, do that. I am not someone who likes to use it. So what I'll do is one at a time, I will glue down this edge. Now the glue is not meant to be a permanent fix. The glue is only meant for me to have it secured while I'm sewing so it's not going and shifting around while it's under the foot of my machine. So I'm just going to add a little bit of glue down here to the bottom of one at a time. And the glue dries really quickly and definitely doesn't give me any problems with sewing through whenever I'm sewing. A little bit there, take my time. And then I'll just hold down it to get that, give that time to secure. Before I even add the other one, I'm going to go ahead and take this one over to the machine and add some stitching to it. I just realized I was off camera while sewing. I had moved my angle around. I'm sorry. I will get on camera for this next one so you can see, but I did just basically do two rows of stitching on there. I'm going to add some glue to this other one and repeat that process and I'll make sure I get in frame for this one. Make sure that your webbing is not getting twisted whenever you're placing it down on the second one. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out my strap. I'm going to go ahead and clip it in between the measurements I made initially and then I'm going to add some glue even to this spot as well to kind of help it stay, stay straight and not shift while I'm sewing it also. Ok, 
Okay, so now that I have that clipped in place, I'm going to add just a little bit of glue so that it's not shifting whenever I'm sewing it. I definitely want to make sure everything stays nice and straight, whereas this, since this is going to be kind of a feature part of the bag. So I will also take my time to make a few measurements to make sure it's all the same distance down from the top. Okay, I measured it, everything is good. So now I'm just gonna get a little bit of glue and put it along here, not for permanent hold, just so it doesn't slip while I'm sewing it. I wanna sew all the way across this webbing, just a complete rectangle. I'm gonna go about an eighth of an inch away. If you wanted to, you could come back and do a quarter of an inch away. I'm thinking that I'm probably going to add some rivets here, so I'm not worried about the second row of stitching, but just definitely know that's an option if you would like to do that. I think I'm actually going to start my stitching here on the side. That way I don't have to worry about any back stitching showing up in the final version of this bag. I have sewn on the first set of straps and the webbing. Off camera, I'm going to do these same steps for the other one. I'll also trim up the webbing on the ends, and I think I'm going to put one, maybe two rivets on here. I'm not for sure exactly. I'm going to look at that. I'm also going to go ahead and add my tags on the front. I will just center my own tag and then on the back I will put this other tag and then I will sew the Marathon Society tag on my lining. I did go ahead and put on the handles, the strap bar, the rivets, the tags on both the front and the back. It looks so cute. I love it so much. I also added a tag to the lining and I also needed to add a tag to the mini fundamental pouch that I'm going to be sewing up also. While off camera, I went ahead and made some measurements on the exterior and the lining. I added them to the wrong side. You're going to draw a line all the way across. The pattern tells you how far down from the top you draw it. This is going to be for you to fold down your exterior and your lining because we're going to do a drop in lining for this bag. Yes, of course you could do other versions, but this drop in lining is so easy, so quick and simple. I really suggest you do that. So at this point, we've got a couple things we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and take exterior pieces and my two lining pieces, and I'm just going to place them right sides together. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that my side seams match up by placing a clip there. Where I have this webbing, that is the part I want to pay special attention to first, just so it's not horribly off whenever I'm doing, whenever I turn the bag. It shouldn't be too bad, but still I'm going to put a clip there first. But what I really want to do is I want to sew my bottom first. I kind of like sewing along the bottom and then butterflying that seam so that the tote lays nice and evenly whenever you're finished with the bag. I can see I'm a little bit off in my cutting. It happens, I'll just trim that up at the end. So you can see there's a little bit of off there. The reason why I'm not going to adjust that is because I want the webbing to match up more than I care about that overhang. I will trim it at the end. So now what I'm gonna do is I am just going to sew all along this long edge here at the bottom using the same allowance given in the pattern. I am now going to open the seam up and I'm going to top stitch. I'm going to be butterflying this seam so I'll be sewing down both sides. Now you could definitely do this from the exterior but I just find it easier to do it from my wrong side of the bag and I don't have any problems with the way my bobbin looks. Like my bobbin looks the same for top stitching as my top thread so I'm okay with that but if you feel like hey my top thread looks better than my bobbin definitely do it from the other side. And this will just allow my bag to just sit a little bit better I feel like. You 
do not have to do this step for my for the lining if you don't want to i am going to but you don't have to it's not a necessity but for me i'm just going to repeat the same steps with the lining as well as the exterior now that we have this done it's time to go ahead and put this back right sides together again and match up those side seams once more it should be a little bit easier to even match up since i've already got that bottom stabilized Okay, I have those seams matched up again. I'm going to go ahead now and just sew down the side seams, making sure that I take care to get the proper seam allowance here. Now that we have both the sides and the bottoms, we need to go ahead and box those corners. The way I like to box the corners, I like to kind of open it up and smash down the bottom part so it's really open nicely. I'm going to once again butterfly these seams as well. I'm just going to match it up. Before I sew this, what I like to do is I like to take it and smash everything down completely. This is how I like to have mine sewn so that everything is flat and I can make sure I get a good stitch across that. Definitely make sure you back stitch when you start and stop. So here is that first side of the box corner. I'm going to repeat that on this other side and I'm also going to do those same steps with the lining to have everything completed. So when we come back, we will have the lining and the exterior sewn together with our corners boxed, and then we will go on to the next step. So I have my exterior completely done. I have it set aside because we're so big. I'm having a hard time showing you on camera, so I thought I would just work with the lining a little bit. The exterior, I did turn right sides out. My lining, I'm keeping wrong sides out. If you remember, I talked about this line. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to start with the seam and we're going to fold down to that line and just clip all around here. I already have the exterior clipped and so of course I'll pull that one back out when it's time to put it in. But I just wanted to go ahead and show how we're folding that raw edge down to that line. You could use double-sided tape here if you wanted to. I am just going to clip. I do not use double-sided tape unless I absolutely have to. And for this step, I definitely don't feel like I do need to. So this is what the lining looks like with that raw edge clip down. I'm going to sit this aside. The last step we need to do is just simply put that in, drop it in the exterior and then top stitch around. But before we do that, we're going to pull out our little mini one that we are working on and get started working with it. I'm going to consider this the back. I'm going to let this be the front. So we have these pieces for the exterior. We have the lining pieces, the same cut and shape. First thing I want to do is I want to pull out my zipper. I am going to go ahead, make sure this is trimmed evenly across the top because I had just rough cut it. And what I want to do is you could do a zipper tab on both ends. I don't like to do that. I like to have one end kind of folded down so that I get a more wide opening on the other side. The zipper tab does prevent that from opening all the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to fold this down 90 degrees. I just use one finger and I push it up and use my other hand to pull that down to get that 90 degrees. That's all I do on that. Now if I am um, not close to my sewing machine, if I'm working at this somewhere else, I'll go ahead and glue those down. But since I'm right here beside my machine, I'll just go ahead and tack it down. The key is on this is to not let the foot go over the teeth. So I always start sewing this way. I'm just going to tack it down an eighth of an inch. So I'll move my clip, but I will keep my stiletto right there in place. Keep my hand in place. A little tricky, but I'll be very careful here. And I am not going to let any of my foot go over those teeth. 
I'm back stitching here. And now when we're getting close to the teeth, I'm going to use that stiletto. If there is any shifting, which it's not, it's already tacked down pretty good. But if there is any shifting, go ahead and use your stiletto and get closer up to your teeth. And that is how I get that 90 degrees there. I'm going to do the same thing with the other side. It's a little trickier with the other side because you're still wanting to sew that same way. But it's kind of, it feels a little more awkward. So you just got to be a little more careful with this one, a little more finagling. But again, sit your foot down, keeping those teeth pushed straight. And I'm going to make sure I have that stiletto there with the zipper tape holding it in place. And this is how it looks. Let's go ahead and trim all that up so everything looks nice. I'm now going to add my zipper pull on. This is very cheap zipper tape that I've had for years and it's just not the best quality. So I put the zipper pull on one side first, take the other side, bring it into an angle, make sure they're even, and then I push it down and then wrap it on my finger and pull. Make sure that it's kind of an even bump on both sides. Little side note for you, FYI, Kathy Caudill from Caudill Hame can do this backwards. She can put it on from the wrong side. I don't know. I've seen her do it or I wouldn't believe it. I would think it was a lie, but she really can do it. I don't know. Magic. So now what I want is I want to make for sure that neither this part of my zipper or this part will be in the seam allowance. I'm not going to add this until I get the measurements right. I personally prefer it to be a little bit of a gap there just to make for sure it's not close. Sometimes when you're sewing the zipper, there can be some stretching and you just really don't want to risk it being in there because then it's just a mess. So I usually make my zippers a little bit shorter than they need to be specifically so I don't have to worry so much about it. So once I get that measured to where I know it's not going to be caught in the seam allowance, I go ahead and trim up the zipper. And then I just rough cut this piece of vinyl. I did not pay any attention to the measurements at all. And I'm just going to fold it in half, slip that zipper end in there. I'm going to top stitch along that raw edge about an eighth of an inch away, making sure that I do my back stitching when I'm actually on the zipper tape, not before it. And you could, of course, make this size a little teeny toe, or you can play around with the sizes to make different sized pouches. It's just, Leslie gives us the bones for the pattern, and we can kind of play around with it and do other things with it. So it's a really, really good pattern. Okay, got a little more thread there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to center my zipper tape on this pouch. Add a few clips on here to hold it in place. And then I'm just going to go ahead and add that lining piece right sides down. So the zipper is right sides down with the exterior. The lining will be right sides down with the exterior. And I'm going to clip this from edge to edge. You will have to move your zipper pull while you're sewing. So definitely stop with the needle down, lift your foot up and pull the zipper pull out of the way so you don't sew with the bump. You're going to sew from edge to edge here, back stitching of course, moving your zipper pull when you need to. I'm going to do, I typically do, it's about a quarter of an inch, but basically you're going to get as close to the teeth as your zipper foot will allow you to do. Now I'm just going to flip these to where they are wrong sides together, pull them down, so I will top stitch an eighth of an inch away just where the zipper tape is. Okay, and this is what I have now. I'm going to repeat those same steps with the other exterior lining piece and then we'll come back to do the rest of it. So this is what my pouch looks like at this point. I have my exteriors top stitch, my linings top stitch. What I'm going to do is I'm simply going to place the linings 
right sides together and I'll do the same with the exteriors. I'm going to clip and I'm going to sew all around but just leave an opening there at the bottom of my lining so that I can turn my pouch through that. We will have to box the corner so we will do that after we sew around the sides. When I come to this part here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold my tabs in half, push them together, and I'm going to unzip my zipper just so I don't have to worry about like getting it in the way of when I'm sewing. It's not that I need to so much have it for an opening. It'll be easily easy to open from the wrong side. I just want to make sure I have no problems with hitting it with the needle. First thing I'll do is I'll start sewing here at the bottom and I'm just going to do, let's just do about a quarter of an inch. Coming up to those zipper tabs, make sure you do not sew them into your seam allowance. You will pivot and then just start going back down for your lining. sew a little bit on both sides of this bottom making sure our back stitch just so whenever I get done I'll be able to turn it but also you'll need to sew a little bit just so you can box those corners. We're going to box the corners the same way we did with the actual toe. I'm just going to put my hand in here open up that zipper really nice so I can get down to the bottom. And like I said, I always like to open it from the middle. I don't like to just work right there on the corner itself because I feel like it gets uneven if I do that. I'm butterflying. You can nest, whichever you prefer. Clipping, pulling, making sure everything's straight, putting a few clips there. I'll just show this one part of the corners. The rest of it I'll do off camera just because you already seen it now. This will be the second time, so I don't want to waste your time showing the same thing over and over again. So there's the first one. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with the other ones and then we'll just turn through here and close up this. Then we'll finish up the tote. I have everything sewn on my little pouch just ready to turn it through the opening. Let's see if it looks okay. I usually start by pushing out one corner of the exterior through the opening. And kind of birthing it that way. It seems like it's the best way for me to get it usually. Okay, my box corners look great. This side looks great. Let's check out this side with the zipper tab. Not too shabby. I am okay with that. Let me go ahead and close up this opening in the bottom. I'll just put a few clips in here and I'm just folding those raw edges in. I'll just sew across this with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. You can hand base this too if you're someone that likes to hand sew. Pouch is done. It's super, super cute. Like I said, you could even just make this like a little teeny mini tote using the same pattern. Just printing it out at a smaller size. There is the back. That makes such a cute little pouch. I love the shape, very cute. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish up our tote. We have the lining already clipped. I'm going to pull down my exterior. I have it hanging right here. It looks great. And I have it clipped with these big clips. I get these online at Amazon and I really like the way they do. They don't leave indentions, but they're strong. They're not breaking on me and they hold really well. So let's go ahead now and we're just slipping this lining directly into your exterior. Now this lining could be made with all the additional features that Leslie has. You can put slip pockets, zipper pockets, you can do the center divided pocket. So many different options. So I just wanted to do mine kind of simple and show just some different ways you could sew the handles. So just be creative with whatever you want. 
with this pattern. So I'm going to flip my handle out of the way and I'm going to match up that side seam first. I'm going to start going around. I'm going to leave the heavy clip on that side seam, but I'll just use these lighter clips on the rest of it. Just make it easier while I'm sewing to take it off. Everything should fit perfectly if you've cut it correctly and you sewed with the proper seam allowance. So what I want is I want to have just that lining just a little bit below that exterior. I'm going to clip it all the way around, so maybe about a sixteenth of an inch even, just a shade lower than the exterior so that whenever I sew it all together, you won't be able to see the lining peeking through. Unless you want it to. I mean, personal preference, I guess. Let's go ahead and straighten everything up. Lining fits perfectly. That's the beauty of a drop-in lining. Look at that, how gorgeous that is inside. Just perfect. What we're simply going to do now is just sew all around. It's kind of like a top stitch and your um, attaching stitch all in one. So you save time by doing a drop-in lining because you're not sewing and then flipping and then sewing again. I'm going to keep my handles out of the way. So I'm going to push them down. I am sewing from the wrong side. If that makes you uncomfortable, you could definitely turn it around and sew from the right side, whatever you feel best with doing. And I am going to start top stitching and I'm just going to slowly go around, back stitch or pull your threads, whichever you prefer. But this is a step that matters, so don't rush it. Take your time. You do not want to mess up all your hard work on this bag because you rushed this last step. While I am top stitching so very slowly, I will want to uh, tell a story about when I first met Leslie. I met her at SME in Tennessee, I believe, was the first time I met her. She is just as nice, friendly, knowledgeable in person as she is online. She is super easy to talk with and just very friendly person. So she's great with business. She does everything really smart and well, great designs and just a wealth of knowledge to talk to her. I look forward to her coming out with other patterns. I hope she does. I felt like she just wrote a perfect pattern, just like everything was described. You did not have to put in any guesswork, even just as far as like where to put the washer on hardware. She had everything figured out and it just made it so easy to relax and sew instead of worrying about anything turning out right. Leslie does have templates in her shop for this pattern, which would be great since this pattern comes together so quick already having the templates would make it even an easier sew and let's see if my tote needs any shaping i tote i shape almost every bag i do i just feel like that's a necessary step to have a professional look at the end Look at how perfect my fundamental tote looks. This is adorable. It is so cute, so perfect. I love everything about it. This pattern is from Jolie Lee Creations. My vinyl and webbing is from the Emporium. My tags are from Heartwood and Hyde. Cotton woven inside is from Jane R. Edwards. Look at that perfect fit. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. And it's so quick and easy too. It's not a hard bag to sew at all. So thank you guys so much for watching another tutorial of mine. This is the third sewing marathon. We have ones planned for at least one every month for this year. And so hopefully you guys can join them all with us. And we want to thank you for watching and chatting with us. I am so thankful that everybody joined us today on this wonderful day for just sewing and fun. I hope that today in your sewing room, you're able to take a pattern that you love and just do something unique to it to give it a completely different feel so you can have even more fun creating and designing and showing designers love by sharing off their pattern that you used in a new way. 
Designers love to see their patterns have new life and just new creations made with them. So sew up a pattern today, even if it's not this one, sew up one you love. Try something new with it and just let the designer know that you are thankful for the patterns that they have taken the time and the effort to write for us. For those of us that cannot, <laughs> do not have the skills to write our own patterns, I'm very thankful because I am one of those people. So thank you, Leslie, for letting us do this. Thank you to everybody participated, and I hope you guys all have a wonderful day today.